The Mongols are descendants of the Xiongnu, mentioned in the earliest Chinese history books of the Tang Dynasty. With the exception of a few in the northern mountainous regions, who live by hunting and fishing, most Mongol tribes live in grasslands and raise cattle. Mainly sheep, cows, horses. In the 8th century, the Mongols were dependent on the Tujue and the Hoho respectively. By the second half of the 9th century, they formed a tribe, led by the Tatar tribe. In the 11th century, the Tatar tribal coalition disintegrated, because of the attack of Lu Water. In the 12th century, Mongolian tribes were often attacked by Kim. By this period, on the immense prairie including Mongolia, the inner Mongolia of China and a strip in the southern Siberia, there were many Mongolian tribes living. Mongolian residents organize nomadic communes. In particular, animals are common. At the same time, each tribe has relatively fixed breeding areas. Gradually, the private regime was born, the phenomenon of differentiation of asset development. Moreover, the wars between tribes and accidents caused by nature made many people go bankrupt. In contrast, the leaders of the tribe and gens through the war have captured many prisoners, animals and lawns. These factors accelerate the classification of class. Members of the gens began to divide into two categories, Noyan and Erat. Noyan is a rich class. Erat is those who have lost production materials, so they are turned into dependent workers. In the process of dividing the class, the Mongolian nobles chose a number of tribal members, forming a number of soldiers, called Nok. In addition, in society there are slaves, originating mainly prisoners, captured in wars between tribes. By the end of the 12th century, the early 13th century, the war between tribes happened. During the war, some tribes destroyed, some tribes became strong. At the same time, the tribal alliance was established. The top of the tribe is Han, with relatively large power and authority. It is the transition step towards the establishment of the Mongolian state. The establishment of the Mongolian state is associated with the name of Thayat Mak Chan, that is, Genghis Khan. Thayat Mak Chan came from an aristocratic family. His father's name is Datak Kai, the leader of the Kiad tribe. In 1164, Datak Kai was poisoned to death by the Tarta tribe. So the Kiad tribal union disbanded, each tribe going one place. The Datak Kai family then faced many hardships and had to live in poverty. Later, with the help of the tribal leader and his sworn brother from childhood, Jamuga, Tietmu Chan regrouped his former forces. First of all, Tietmu Chan defeated the Tarta tribe, directly slaughtering the inhabitants of this tribe. Next, Tai Mak Chan cut ties with Jamuga, drawing many clans that depended on Jamuga to follow him. Therefore, the power is stronger. In 1189, Thayat Mak Chan was elected as Khan by the nobility and clans. Then he defeated the other tribes in turn. By 1205, all tribes in Mongolia had to submit to Thayat Mak Chan. And so the unification of the Mongol tribes was completed. In 1206, the tribal leaders met the Kurultai Congress. The Congress elected Thayat Mak Chan as the Great Khan, that is, Genghis Khan. That event marked the official establishment of the state of Mongolia. To organize a strong administrative apparatus and to reward the aristocracy, Genghis Khan brought livestock areas and rewarded them with herdsmen. Thus a system of Noyan nobles was formed. These nobility titles and positions are inherited. This administrative organization is also a military organization. With the policy of the entire people are soldiers. The son every 15 years old must join the army and be payrolled in the above organizations. Thus, the Noyan is both lord and local administrative officials and military commanders. Therefore, the Mongolian state organization at that time was a combination of politics and military into the one. In addition to the army of Noyan, Genghis Khan also organized a pioneer army of 1,000 bravely in a bodyguard, including healthy, good martial arts and very loyal. He also established a judicial agency. He issued a law to protect the ruling of the aristocracy. And as a basis for binding and punishing the people. After establishing the state, the Mongols moved straight from the clan to feudal society. But the feudal regime in Mongolia has a characteristic that is not based on agricultural economy, but built on the livestock economy. Therefore, the main object of exploitation is not farmers but herders. 
In order to expand his dominion, after the establishment of the unified Mongol state, Genghis Khan mobilized all his forces to conduct conquests in distant regions, from Asia to Europe. Shocked the whole world at that time. Genghis Khan's invasion scheme was first aimed at the two neighboring countries of Western Xia and Kim. In 1209, the Mongols defeated the Western Xia. Unable to resist, Western Xia had to hand over her daughter to make peace, but in fact the country became a vassal of Mongolia. The Mongols forced the people of Western Xia to hand over their camels to prepare to fight Kim. In 1211, Genghis Khan brought his troops massively to attack Kim. By 1214, the Mongols captured a lot of Kim's land, and then surrounded Chengdu, which is Beijing today. Kim had to ask for peace with the condition that he had to marry the princess to Genghis Khan, at that time he was 59 years old. And must submit a lot of silk gold, boys, girls, horses to do dowry. Although the Mongols withdrew, but to avoid the threat of the Mongols, King Kim left the capital to go to Hien Luang. Convinced that King Kim lacks sincerity, that autumn, Genghis Khan attacked again. The entire territory north of the Yellow River of the Kim State was merged into the Mongolian map. In 1216, Genghis Khan sent a general who stayed to hold the land that had captured, and he brought troops back to Mongolia, to prepare for a new conquest. At that time, in the southwest of Mongolia, there was a western Liaoning country, created by the Lion King's lineage since 1124. In 1218, Genghis Khan sent Triat Beat to bring 22,000 troops to attack and capture Teilu. From there, the border of Mongolia was adjacent to Khwarezm, a country founded by the Turks in Central Asia in the 11th century. In 1218, a Mongol merchant fleet of 450 men with 500 camels, carrying full of gold, silver, livestock and precious goods to Central Asia to trade. As soon as they arrived at the Khwarezm border, this merchant group was detained by the army and suspected of being spies, so they killed most of them. Only one survivor ran to report the news. That became the spark of the fierce, catastrophic Mongol attack on Khwarezm. In the autumn of 1219, Genghis Khan brought 200,000 troops to launch a massive attack on Khwarezm. After only a few months, the Mongols captured many of the country's strongholds and lands. Khwarezm King Muhammad fled to a small island in Lai Hai. By December 1220, he was sick and died there. Prince Jalal ad-Din ascended the throne, reorganizing his forces to protect the city-state Urgench, the former capital of Khwarezm. The Mongols attacked the state of Urgench and after six months of siege, captured the city. After the city was defeated, except for a few craftsmen, women and children were enslaved. The majority of the inhabitants were killed, while the invaders broke the dike, allowing the water to flood into the city to drown. While Urgench city was besieged by the Mongols, some generals tried to kill Jalal ad-Din, so he had to bring 300 trusted generals and run to Koh Rasan. Pursued by Genghis Khan, Jalal ad-Din had to flee to India. The Mongols pursued again as far as India. And in a battle on the banks of the Indus River, Jalal ad-Din lost a great deal, had to leave everything, alone, riding a horse to swim across the river, running to the outskirts of the Caucasus. The country of Khwarezm perished. After defeating Jalal ad-Din on the banks of the Indus, Genghis Khan attempted to attack India. But the Mongols were met with strong resistance. So they had to retreat to Central Asia. In 1225, Genghis Khan, along with his three children, Sathop Dai, Oa Kot Dai, and Deloy, withdrew to Mongolia. During that time, when King Muhammad ran to Lai Hai, Genghis Khan sent Triat Beat and Takbu Dai to chase after him. But when the Mongols reached the shores of Lai Hai, Muhammad was dead. The Mongols invaded Azerbaijan and stationed there, waiting for the winter to pass. In 1222, Triad Beat and Takbu Dai invaded Georgia, and crossed the Caucasus Mountains to the north. In 1223, at the campaign on the banks of the Khalkha River, the Mongols defeated 80,000 Russian Kiev forces. The Mongol generals bound the Russian princes, put boards on their heads, and sat on them to celebrate their victory. Then the Mongols turned to the east. In 1226, Genghis Khan again attacked the western Xia, destroyed many cities, and then marched to besiege the capital. Seeing that he could not resist, the king of Teha asked to surrender and asked to surrender the city a month later. But one day before that deadline, on August 25, 1227, Genghis Khan died. Before his death, 
he told him to wait until the king of Teha surrendered the city, arrested and killed, before being allowed to mourn. So within a few decades, with massive and destructive wars, Genghis Khan built a vast empire that included South Siberia, North China, Central Asia and part of the Caucasus. While still alive, Genghis Khan divided the lands of the empire among his four sons. The eldest son Truitzich was located from the Irtish River to the west. But Truitzich died before Genghis Khan, so the land was assigned to his son, Bat Du. The second son, Sat Hop Dai, acquired the former land of Western Lu, including Xinjiang and part of present-day Central Asia. The third son, Oe Kwatai, got the western part of Mongolia. The youngest son of Deloy, according to Mongolian custom, inherited his father's land from the Orkhan River to the east. Genghis Khan is one of the most prominent and influential military men in world history. He was respected by the Mongols as their unification leader. Genghis Khan's conquests across Eurasia made the world fear, in front of the Mongols' hooves. And laid the foundation for the later Dying Gwyn Empire. When Genghis Khan died, because he could not convene the Kurultai Nobles Conference, the Loi temporarily took control of the country. In 1229, the Council of Nobles recognized Oa Kot Dai as the successor to the Great Khan according to the will of Genghis Khan. At the same time, this conference also discussed plans to attack the Kim, Southern Song, Korea, Persia and Western Europe. In 1230, Oa Kot Dai, the Loi and their son Mong Ka brought troops to attack the Kim country, opening a new long march. In 1232, according to the will of Genghis Khan, Oa Kot Dai sent messengers to the Southern Song, enticed the Southern Song to fight with Kim, and promised that after the victory, the land south of the Yellow River would be handed over to Southern Song. In 1233, the Mongols successively captured many of Kim's provinces and then besieged the Kim Palace. King Kim had to flee to Taizhou. At that time, the Southern Song sent 20,000 troops to coordinate. In 1234, the Mongols and Southern Song besieged Taizhou. King Kim commits suicide, Kim country perishes. Simultaneously with the invasion of the Kim country, in 1231, the Mongols began to attack Chao Lai. The Mongols attacked the imperial capital, Kaitan. The king of Chao Lai requested to make peace on the condition that he had to pay many gifts and let the Mongols place 72 governors in important places. In 1232, because Chao Lai killed Darahasi and showed his attitude, Mongolia attacked Chao Lai again. Due to the spirit of the resistance of the people Chao Lai, it was not until 1253 that Mongolia tamed this country. In 1236, under the command of Bat Du, 150,000 Mongols rushed to the west. In the winter of 1237, the Mongols attacked Russia. By the end of 1238, Mongolia had captured many countries in Russia, including Moscow. At the end of 1240, the Mongols occupied and devastated the ancient Kiev. In 1241, Bat Du divided the army into two religions to attack Hungary and Poland. The Hungarian king ran away. The Mongols pursued the Hungarian king to the Yugoslav coast close to Venezia. The whole of Europe was shocked. In Germany people had to pray, asking God to save them from the wrath of Tarda. And Pope Gregor IX called for the organization of crusaders to fight the Mongols. Although they won consecutive victories, the Mongol forces were also exhausted, unable to continue deep into Europe. Plus news of the death of the great Khan, Oa Kot Dai. Therefore, in 1242, Bat Du had to turn to the east, stationed in the Volga region. Due to the conquest of Bat Du, the land of Truitzich was expanded and established as the Golden Horde Khanate. Meanwhile, in 1241, Oa Kot Dai died. After five years of fighting for the throne, in 1246, the aristocratic conference appointed Kui Du, the son of Oa Koatai to succeed the Dai Han throne. Two years later, in 1248, Kui Du died. The fight for the throne happened again. In 1251, Mong Ka son of Deloy was appointed as Dai Han. After ascending the throne, Mong Ka continued to organize invasion expeditions, and the main targets were West Asia and Southern Song. In 1252, to create a siege position for Southern Song, Mong Ka sent his second brother, Kublai Khan, to lead an army down to Sichuan, and then down to Yunnan to destroy the Dali state. In 1253, Kublai Khan sent Ngat Luang Hoptai to attack Tibet. 
I myself returned to the north. In 1254, Tibet had to be subdued. In early 1258, Luang Hoktai brought troops to attack Dai Viet to make a pedal to Nam Song. Dai Viet army and people under the leadership of the Tran dynasty and King Tran Tai Tong defeated the Mongols' invasion. Although the wings of the invaders of Dai Viet were failed, it was found that the opportunity to attack Nam Tong had arrived. That same year, in 1258, Monk and Kublai Khan split their troops into two attacks on China's Sichuan and Hubei regions. In 1259, Mong Ka died in battle. Kublai Khan temporarily halted the conquest of the Southern Song, pulling his army to the north to fight for the throne. In 1260, Kublai Khan arbitrarily summoned his confidants to the Kurultai Conference in Kanbalik to recognize him as the Great Khan. A part of Mongol aristocrats in Hoa Lam appointed a Lai Bat Ca, Mong Ka's youngest brother as Dai Han. After four years of fraternal rivalry, Kublai Khan won. In 1271, Kublai Khan changed his title to emperor, named the country Yuan, moved the capital to Kian Kin and called it Dai Du. After stabilizing the situation, in 1274 Kublai Khan brought his army to conquer the Southern Song. In 1276, the Southern Song court surrendered. But the remaining forces continued to resist until 1279 when they completely failed. In the west, from 1253, Mong Ka sent his third brother, Huk Litenga, to attack West Asia. And in 1258, the Mongols captured Baghdad. The Arab Khalifa, and Muxtaxan, was put in a bag and then trampled to death by a horse. The Arab Zabas dynasty was destroyed. Next, the Mongols attacked Syria, Egypt. But in 1260 was defeated by the Egyptian troops, so it had to stop. On the territory conquered in West Asia, Huk Litengat surrounded a country of the Mongols, called Han Waini. So within half a century, the Mongolian horse was spread throughout Asia, Europe causing terrible war disasters. As a result, the Mongols set up a vast empire from the Pacific to the Black Sea. Although the Mongolian Empire is vast, but from the beginning, it contains elements of distinction. Due to the division of Genghis Khan and as a result of the next conquest, from the 1960s of the 13th century, the Mongolian Empire was divided into five areas. The major part of the empire, which the Great Khan directly administered, consisted of the former lands of Mongolia, Manchuria, and North China. There are two capitals here, Karakoram and Kanbalik. The domain of the descendants of Oa Kot Dai in the mountains of Altai. The territory of the Sat Hop Dai descendants from Xinjiang to the east of the Amu Darya River. In 1311, these two domains merged into one. The Golden Horde Khanate includes the former feudal lordship of Truitsich and the region newly conquered by Bat Du, in Europe. Hulagu's Khanate of Huk Litengat included Western Amu Darya, South Caucasus, Iran and Iraq. When Kublai Khan ascended the throne, although nominally, these fiefdoms were still parts of the empire. Outwardly still receiving ordination, but in reality they have turned into independent countries, no longer under the control of the Great Khan. Due to the political dispersion, cultural and religious differences, relations between the countries established by the Mongols became increasingly distant. And by the beginning of the 14th century, they also did not nominally recognize the authority of the Great Khan. Even considered the Great Khan as a stranger. Therefore, from the 60s of the 11th century, the history of the countries of Golden Chan, e Air, and Shagatai did not belong to the history of Mongolia. Each country has its own history. The history of the Yuan Empire is closely related to the history of China. In the early Yuan Dynasty, within only 20 years, Kublai Khan launched many wars to invade Japan. Burma, Kampa, Dai Viet and Java. Japan has long been a target of Mongol conquest. In 1266, Kublai Khan repeatedly sent messengers to Japan, requesting the establishment of diplomatic relations and urging the Japanese king to immediately send emissaries to the Mongol court. If that requirement is not met, war will be inevitable. But before and after Japan still did not respond. Therefore, after the establishment of the Yuan dynasty, in 1274, Kublai Khan sent Han Du and Hong Tra Kao to send troops to fight Japan. The Yuan army captured the islets of Tsushima and Iki Island, and landed on the northwestern island of Kyushu. 
However, realizing that there were not enough forces to advance further, the Yuan army had to withdraw. In 1281, the Nguyen dynasty again sent the generals A Thap Hai, Truong Ban Ho, Han Du, and Hong Tra Kao to send troops to attack Japan for the second time. When the Nguyen army had just arrived in Japan, they had not yet had time to fight when they encountered a storm. Many boats were sunk. Van Ho and other generals chose to take strong and good boats to return, leaving more than 100,000 soldiers at the foot of the mountain. When they were cutting wood to build boats to return, the Japanese came to fight. Most of the soldiers were killed, the remaining 230,000 were taken away. So 10,000 troops, only three people returned. The Yuan dynasty intended to hit Japan again. But while preparing soldiers and ships, the war to invade Dai Viet in 1285 suffered a heavy defeat. So in 1286, Kublai Khan decided to give up fighting the Japanese to focus his forces on fighting Dai Viet. For Burma in 1271, Kublai Khan repeatedly sent envoys to demand Burmese surrender. But Burma refused to submit, even once killed the messenger. Therefore, Kublai Khan sent troops to attack Burma three times in 1277, 1283 and 1287. As a result, Burma had to submit in the form of having to receive the title and pay tribute to the Yuan. After that, the Burmese government was manipulated by three Athinca brothers from the tribe. In 1298, Athinca captured the Burmese king and killed him. The son-in-law and son of the Burmese king fled to China. Taking advantage of that confusion, in 1300, the Yuan dynasty invaded Burma for the fourth time. Surrounded by the Yuan army, the Athinkaya brothers brought a lot of gold and silver to bribe the enemy generals. Therefore, Nguyen used the reason that it was hot, blue obstacles arose, and the army was suffering. If not, fear of being blamed for death. Then immediately withdraw. Returning to the country, two generals Chao Khan and Chuk Khan Buhoa were executed for taking bribes, which failed the war of aggression. Chien Tan was also the conquest of the Nguyen dynasty. In 1279, Kublai Khan sent messengers to request King Kampa to come to visit. In order to avoid the danger of war, Chien Tan expressed his submission, but did not agree to let the Yuan set up a provincial administration in his country. Therefore, in 1283, the Yuan army attacked the capital of Chien Tan. The king burned the treasure, temporarily withdrawed into the forest. After that, King Qian pretended to ask for the goods to lure the Yuan army into the arranged battlefield. The Yuan army had to risk himself to escape to the entrenched station. And by the beginning of 1284, they had to quietly retreat. For Dai Viet, after the defeat in the War of Aggression in 1258, the Nguyen dynasty was determined to take revenge. Kublai Khan sent his ninth son, Tho Hon, to lead troops to attack Dai Viet twice more, in 1285 and 1288. In these two wars, the Yuan dynasty mobilized extremely large forces along with a lot of physical resources. Especially during the second invasion in 1285 with 50,000 troops. The army was considered the largest and most powerful in the world at that time. However, the Dai Viet army and people under the leadership of the Tran dynasty won both of those wars. As for Java, in 1292, Kublai Khan sent Meng Chi as an envoy, demanding that the country submit to the Yuan dynasty. But was driven back by King Kritanagra. Using that excuse, at the end of 1292, the Yuan sent Chao Hung to bring 20,000 troops and 1,000 boats across the sea to the south and by the beginning of 1293, to Java. At that time, Kritanagra was killed by a feudal lord Jayakakatvang to usurp the throne. His son-in-law Rajan Vijaya pretended to surrender to the Yuan army, to borrow the invaders' forces to avenge his father-in-law. As a result, the Yuan army temporarily gained victory. But then Rajan Vijaya organized a counterattack. The Yuan army failed to withdraw. The Yuan dynasty, after capturing China, was active in Han dynasty but was still a foreign dynasty. Therefore, during this period, Chinese society existed two main conflicts, national conflicts and class conflicts. The policy of prioritizing the Mongols and oppressed other peoples, causing the society to divide and divide deeply. Therefore, during the dominance of the Yuan dynasty, the struggle movements of the Chinese people took place continuously. By the end of the Nguyen life, the Red Tao revolved by Lu Fuk Thong exploded.
During this period, a Red military force led by Chun Gwyn Chuang continued to develop and defeat other military groups. In 1367, Chun Gwyn Chuang acquired most of the southern China, then continued to advance. In 1368, Chun Gwyn Chuang ascended the throne at Kim Lang, named the country Min. The Yuan court had to run north. Yuan rule in China ended. After fleeing to Mongolia, King Nguyen continued to use the old national name, historically known as Bak Nguyen. From here, the political situation in Mongolia was very chaotic, the Mongols divided into many tribes. At this time, the Khan Kingdom of Yi Ni was disbanded and divided into small states. The Golden Horde was no longer in contact with the Mongols. And by the 15th century it broke up into smaller horde kingdoms. The Shagatai Khanate lasted until the end of the 17th century. Despite losing the western part to the Timurid Empire, the invasion wars of Genghis Khan and his successors had bad consequences for Mongolian society. Mongolian residents were dispersed in Asia and Europe, including a very large number that cut off all relationships with the country. Therefore, the Mongolian population was seriously reduced. The constant civil wars after Mongolia withdrew from China. And the wars occurred regularly between Mongolia and China make the Mongolian political situation unstable. The economy is not growing. In that historical situation, at the beginning of the 17th century, the Jurchens established the Kim state and tried to annex neighboring countries. In 1636, a congress of 49 princes in southern Mongolia convened by Kim declared to acknowledge the rule of King Kim. So southern Mongolia officially became part of the Kim state and later called Inner Mongolia. That same year, Kim changed his name to Tan. After defeating the Ming Dynasty, the Qing state dominated China and continued to conquer northern and western Mongolia. By the 17th century and the middle of the 18th century, these lands also submitted to the Qing Dynasty. Later, their former area was called Outer Mongolia. Thus, the entire country of Mongolia was annexed by the Dai Qing Empire. <laughs>